Hey y'all, this is Dr. B. Uh, this is a question, this is a, uh, sorry, a video on something called GEO, uh, which is a gene expression omnibus. Uh, and let me get to it, then I'll explain exactly what it is and how it relates to RNA, transcription, etc. First thing is you're going to go to genes and expression, and then you're going to scroll down to gene expression omnibus database. And here is its homepage with an NCBI. And basically what this is, it's a database for RNA methylation profiling and gene expression profiling. Um, it is uh, obviously under the umbrella of NCBI. Um, and this is a lot of cool data that has to do with a lot of experiments and whatnot. So let's just say you want to know something about gene expression in relationship to, um, let's say, smoking and cancer um, and when I go to hit search it's gonna tell me well what do you look what which one are you looking for here and we'll go over both but let's just start with the data sets first this is the actual data here um, and so you'll see there's all kinds of different um, uh, papers and experiments that people have done um, and so this is one I was looking at earlier I think we'll go to this so just kind of follow along with me and click this one here um, if yours doesn't come up fourth, you can just use this platform number. Um, so let's take a look at what this is. Uh, so you can see here that this is a study that was done um, looking at the effects of e-cigarette smoke on transcription of um, these particular um, cell types, uh, one of which is an arterial smooth muscle cell, which is called PASMC. And the second one is an alveolar epithelial cell called ACE2. And they were basically looking at expression of a whole bunch of genes on those based on a couple different things. You can see there were two cell types and treatment with three conditions. And so this is just an, oh, and by the way, this was done in mice. That's a uh, moose musculus. Um, and so from here, we can, uh, just for this class, I mean, obviously in advanced um, bioinformatics we go into a lot more detail about the sampling I just want at this point for you to go to analyze with GO2R it took a second to uh, to load there um, so basically what you're gonna see is something that looks like this uh, I've already been looking at groups and so that's why that uh, I dropped down but when you get here it probably looks like that um, so what are all these particular things? These are uh, different genes and, and cell types uh, and different conditions. And so we can see here that um, on the treatment to the right, we have smoke uh, and room air. These are two different conditions uh, that they were compared to. Uh, this one has to do with cell type and this has to do uh, with which particular strain of uh, cell. Um, and this is the name of the source. So there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of organize all of these things. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so let's just say we want to take a look at like a sample. We could do all these, but I'll just do a sample. Let's compare uh, smoking versus uh, room air under certain conditions. So let's just take a look at, uh, uh, let's just do AEC1. So in order to do that, first thing we have to do is create groups. So we're going to say um, A, C, E, 2, dash, smoke. We'll make that one group. Um, and I just push enter and it becomes a group. And the second one's going to be A, C, E, 2, uh, room air. So there's our, there's our two groups. And if we had to make the groups first. So now we basically have to put things into those particular groups. And to do that, all we do is kind of click and then I hit control. All right, AEC2 smoke. There's a AEC2 smoke, smoke, smoke. Um, so let's just say I'm going to compare those five. And so once I've taken these five, and by the way, I can scroll down and do the rest, but you'll see I lose the uh, highlight. So I'm just going to do a small example here. here. Let me just do one, two, three, four, five. Whoops, let me do that again. One, sorry about that. Uh, two, three, four, five. And you'll see those are, uh, whoops, let's do a, all right, yeah, that's it. So these are all of this particular view, the AEC2, uh, that are smoke. And so I'm just going to kind of click that and now they go into that. So now if I do the room air, um, I can just go ahead and do AEC2 room air. So, 
And all I did to make this easier to uh, organize is I just also hit cell type and then treatment to organize it. So now I need to do a bunch of AEC2 room airs. So there's going to be one, and I'm going to hit control to AEC2 room air, room air, room air. So there's a four to four. And so now I'm only going to do uh, that. And so there, there's our two groups. And so all we can do now, all we have to do is hit analyze. Uh, and again, you can do this for whatever you want. Uh, whatever you're comparing, you can do the whole list uh, just for brevity to make this video shorter. I didn't go down and choose all 28 of each of them. Um, but let's just see what we get. So as this process is, it, it doesn't take that long. It's usually about 15, 20 seconds. Um, we're going to get some really cool data. So uh, here we are with um, all this neat looking data. And so uh, I'll talk about the graphs in a minute, but let's just kind of talk about what we see right here. So don't be overwhelmed uh, by this, but basically what this is, is this is a list of genes that are expressed uh, in order. I think it's like 200 or 250 uh, is where it stops. Uh, they're organized by p-value, uh, which you can see here. And you can, so this is just a particular gene. And so if we just kind of click on this, um, we'll see that we're going to get a graph. And this graph uh, is really cool because it's showing us the relative levels of expression of this particular gene um, in both the smokers and the air sample. And so you can clearly see that this particular um, gene uh, has a differential, differentiated expression based on whether it's in a smoky atmosphere or room air atmosphere. Clearly, uh, in, this gene is expressed more in smoky air than it is in room air. Um, and, and that's pretty cool data. And so you can do this literally for any of them. Um, down the line, some of these have accession numbers that will literally connect to where it is in NCBI. But that's what these all are. Um, and then let's talk about for a second what these graphs are. Now this is just more so for you. Uh, so if later on after this course, um, you know, you want to be able to use these, this is just a quick overview. You wouldn't necessarily use all of them, um, but uh, let me just click on this. So this is basically called a volcano plot and it shows the statistical significance um, of a magnitude of change. And so um, it, it's, it's useful for a lot of different things. Um, a lot of times it has to do with uh, using the, and, and so when you look at it, this isn't the actual uh, appliable data. You basically want to hit explore and download, and this is actually it. And you see that I can actually mouse over all of these things. Um, and what these are are basically a relationship between the two groups and the relative amount of expression to see if there's any statistically significant expression. And you can see here at the bottom it's saying no significant genes, meaning that there's not. But you can mouse over all these and see gene number 14851 um, doesn't have a massive uh, significance between both. And so this is useful because a lot of times you'll get colors um, that will tell you whether they've been up or down regulated. Um, and that is indicated by this, and you'll see that there aren't. So that's just uh, the volcano plot. The second one is this. This is called a mean difference plot. Uh, it's very, very similar to the volcano plot in the sense that you are comparing expression of two groups, and you can also log on, or you can actually uh, scroll onto all these. Um, and again, anything highlighted would have a significantly different expression level, and there just aren't in this, which is perfectly fine. So let's move on to another one. All right, the uh, next one here is basically called a UMAP. It's a uniform manifold approximation and projection. Big fancy word. And basically, it's a uh, technique to visualize the relationship between our samples. And we can see here we have the two different groups by color, green and purple. Um, and it just gives us a relative um, uh, idea of which ones might be related to each other. You can see these are pretty scattered, so therefore they really don't have a lot in common with each other, but if all the greens were clustered down here and all the purples were clustered up there, that would tell you that there's definitely some sort of relationship um, between them or whatever gr group coloring, you can then see, well, what do these all have in common? So um, that's a pretty good one to use a lot. All right, the uh, next one is a VEN. I'm sure you're uh, familiar with um, the VEN. Basically, again, it's just looking at groupings uh, of difference between the two. Um, these are all relatively inclusive. Vins are usually good when you have more than two groups. Um, 
So you can kind of see a uh, difference that way. If we move on to the next one, this one's relatively important. I'm sure you guys may have had some of this uh, in statistics before. Uh, but if not, basically, this is called a box plot. Um, and you can see that there's this weird box with these little tiny things on the end. Um, and basically, this is the minimum value, and this is the maximum value. Um, and right here, this part right here is the lowest quartile, which is the 25th percent. And this little thing's the median, and this is the 75th or upper quartile, as it's called. Um, and so it gives you a relative amount of um, data in, in that sense. And that, again, that's way more statistics. Um, but just explaining what these things are um, for you. So let's go ahead and... This next one here is called uh, expression density. Um, it's it's pretty important uh, to a, to much deeper bioinformatics, but basically you're using this to see whether there is a major difference um, in the normalization um, of the two things. So if density curves differ a lot from both the samples, that's usually not a good thing. And actually, what you'll see here is they look to be literally right on top of each other. Um, so that's why um, this is good. Uh, if it was very different, then we would have to um, take a look at other issues and, and maybe uh, normalize another way. All right, what's next? Oh, uh, yes. So this is a p-value histogram because it says p-value histogram. And uh, the reason why there's only one number is we're only looking at one thing. But if you were to do a bunch of these and analyze a collection of them, um, you could see the relative numbers of where these p-values are. It's just a distribution of where they are, um, which is which is totally fine. Um, then we have another statistical tool, this, which is a moderated t-statistic. And so t-statistic, again, is a hypothesis test comparing the differences between um, two groups. Um, it's the student t distribution, if you've had statistics before. And it allows us to figure out the relative quality uh, of the results, which is neat. And so um, the last one, where are we here? Oh, we did that already. All right, good. So we need to do, oh, here we go. We did, oh, one more. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, this is called the mean variance trend. And this checks for the mean variance relationship of the data. Um, and uh, after it's fit into a linear model. And of course, it can show, just like anything else, how much variation is in the data, um, which is good. And so it kind of looks at the accuracy of the test. Um, and each little point uh, on this thing is an actual uh, gene. And so uh, you can see here that this only has a blue line, uh, but it doesn't have a red line. The blue line is basically where the, uh, the for lack of a better word, where the algorithms are um, finding the constant variance approximation. And then that, that's kind of where it's finding, in essence, this, this variance. So um, again, I haven't used it much, but some people do. But I just want to let you know what these things are. Um, so you can see all the different ways that we can statistically compare a particular group. Um, so that is that. So let's just take a look at one other random one. Uh, look, this one happens to have an accession number. So let's click on here and see what this one gives us. And ooh, look, you can see once again now we have different, you know, an increased expression in smoking, um, which doesn't surprise me. But um, what can you do with this particular information? You can do a lot with it. Um, and uh, it's 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 very helpful. By the way, these are the individual samples right here. So if you want to know where that came from, you can click on this and it'll give you the actual uh, sample data raw. So uh, that is the video. I hope you had uh, some fun and good luck.